All right, guys, Dustin with uh, Vital Tradition, back again for a little ice action. We're gonna try out a new spot here. Um, see if we can get into some different species. Uh, bluegills are out here, but we also have a possibility for some nice crappies, uh, maybe some perch, walleye, pike, and um, muskie are out of season, but they're in here. Um, so we'll see what we get into. White bass are possible. Um, it's gonna be a bigger area. We're gonna have to uh, probably poke a few holes and find the fish. So we'll get out and see what's going on. All right guys, just getting set up here. Had to punch a couple holes before I found some stuff on the graph. It's always a good start. Get out here, punch a hole if you don't see anything on the screen. Here, let me show you. First couple holes I dug, or drilled in the ice, wasn't uh, anything showing up on the return. Maybe some brief little blips on the bottom that might have been efficiently down there, but generally you want to look for something that's for sure, like, okay, there's something down there. So when I drilled the hole, I don't know if you can see this, there's a purple line that kind of changes down there on the bottom. That's fish down there. Most likely there's a chance it's not, but it's uh, it was right off the bottom. It was sitting on the bottom. Um, it's moving enough that it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's fish. So um, this was the third hole I punched. I'm gonna flip over here, give it a shot, um, see if stuff swims through while I'm targeting the stuff I can see on the graph. Um, give it about 15, 20 minutes, nothing's happening, punch another hole, repeat the process and see if we can find fish. Um, seems counterproductive to spend most of your time running around, pulling the sled, drilling holes. Um, but if you think about it, ice fishing, you, you gotta get on the fish, otherwise you're gonna be fishing in the 90% of the water that doesn't have fish. It's just like open water. Um, when you find them, you can have awesome fishing in about 15, 20 minutes. So it's worth to put in the time uh, to find them. All right, here you can see them coming off the bottom a little bit there. We'll so show you that more. Let's get the light hooked up. So this is a clam nanook, um, Jason Mitchell series. We got uh, a light bar up here and that's built into this sled um, and it comes with these clamp on wires that we're just gonna put on a little uh, 12 volt battery here that um, all their graphs run on. So we got that, there's a little holder down here plug that in and we'll have some light on the subject all right welcome to the office <laughs> let's catch some fish cargo net up out of the way here I'm gonna have to toggle you back and forth here so you can see the graph and see me but let's get set up here and try and get a couple fish All right, we're gonna start off with the finesse presentation. We got a three millimeter tungsten in Wonder Bread. We're gonna go ahead and tip that with some spikes. These bait pucks are awesome. Um, if you haven't picked one up yet, it'll uh, save you a lot of accidents and clean up either in your pocket, your truck, you name it. Um, buy a 500 pack, dump some in, keep the others in your fridge. Uh, it's really convenient to do it this way.
All right, let's get down there and see what's going on. All right, so there's definitely fish down there. Just gotta hope they turn on here a little bit and stop being so picky. All right, here comes another one to look at it. I'm gonna start with two today. Normally, I'll thread one, but I wanna make sure we got the hook covered and plenty of meat on there. All right, I lowered down. I'm gonna keep the vibration going here all the way through what I think would be a strike. There we go. That was a real light bite. Real light. Look at that, guys. That's why. Look at that. Oh, a nice perch. Wow. That's awesome. That's really cool, guys. We're going to have to uh, try something else then. Let me give that back. Nice little dude here. Nice old perchy. Heck yeah. First fish on the board. And it's a perch. Yum yum. See you later, buddy. <clears throat> that was fun. Super. That was a super, super light bite. I don't know if you guys could see that on the camera. I mean, my rod tip, like, barely went down. And I just put, lifted up, put some pressure on it. And uh, that was the ticket. So we're gonna get down there, we're gonna try again. But before I do that, since I know those are perch, let's see if we can get something fun going here. We got a little bit beefier rod here. And we're gonna put a, a jigging wrap on there and see if we can't get some strikes out of them. Put on a nice, small, flashy color here. All right, so we're gonna have this guy ready to go. This is a jigging wrap. Uh, nice and small here. I forget what size this is. It's pretty tiny. <clears throat> but uh, we'll have some links to these in the description. Check them out below. You can get different colors. This happens to be a perch glass fire tiger or something. Um, these are awesome for vertical jigging. And it doesn't have to be just for ice. You can do them open water over the side of the boat or at shore. All right, so we're going to get down here. Now, you're going to notice when I do this, the marks go crazy on the graph. This puts out a ton of vibration in the water, and the sonar just picks it up. So this, the screen may look a little little hot, but uh, we're going to see if we can't get a fish to just crush this. Now, you'll want to, you can see how it's going down. Look at all that return. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to just look at that. So you're going to go up and let it fall, and up and let it fall. And look, he's coming right up on it. Sometimes they'll hit it on the fall. Sometimes they'll want it a little higher. One thing you when when you try this technique for yourself and you want to and you're doing the jigging, you want to uh, play around with how high you're coming vertically off of your starting point. So let's say I'm starting here and I snap it up. I'm only going. You look at the depths so of six eight to like about five. You know, somewhere between, you can look at your rod tip too. It's probably easier than doing the math on the graph, but six to 10 inches. And uh, you can get more aggressive with it if you think that's what it needs. So you can go over a foot, go up, play with the distance and see how these fish are reacting. The other thing you can do, play with your tempo coming down. How fast are you letting it fall? Go nice and slow. And then next time just let it free fall like as you can imagine something that heavy would and just see what they want I'm gonna try this a little bit longer my next step if they don't hit this is gonna be I'm gonna try and pound the bottom with it I'm gonna let it go all the way down and I'm gonna rip it off the bottom and if they don't do that I'm gonna go back to the jig and the spike but I'm gonna put some more meat on it because uh, I just have a feeling they're because they're perched, they may want a couple more spikes on there instead of the bluegills like in that finesse single threaded spike. All right, let's start pounding the bottom and see what happens. I don't want to blow them out of there, so if they didn't react right away, we're just going to go back to the spike. 
I'll keep this handy in case there's a big mark that swims through. This is nice to have for that. Just nose hook the spike here so that it creates a bigger profile and a little more action as it's sitting there. There's gonna wiggle that tail. All right, and we're also gonna do at least one more, probably one more after that. And then uh, I'll just thread this one. I don't know if that matters, but we're gonna find out if it matters today. We're gonna tie on a different jig. our other pole here. And we got two pound fluorocarbon <clears throat> attached to the jig here. And then our main line is a uh, five pound Power Pro ice braid. And that just takes up less uh, line there on the spool. Well, it doesn't technically take up less line it's just better uh, space efficiency for, versus strength um, for your main spool and then you need that fluorocarbon uh, on your main line so that you can get down there and not be flashing braid in their face try and be a little bit stealthy sometimes they uh, pick up on that whether they see it, whether they feel it, either way, it'll affect the bite. All right, we're gonna try a, a fly jig. These are, I believe, VMC, their version of a fly jig, but it's something that can be used with or without live bait. It's got a tungsten head, some uh, fly material there, and artificial maggot body that's painted. This one happens to be a uh, rainbow. And uh, we're just gonna see if the perch like this a little bit better today, since that's what seems to be uh, looking at it. I'm gonna keep an eye on the old uh, green hornet here. <laughs> I don't wanna lose that down the hole while I'm sitting here figuring this out. All right, now we're gonna see what they want to eat. We gotta give them another option here. All right, here goes the fly jig. Let's try this out. Wow, that was aggressive. That was a hit. Oh my goodness. I think we uh, made the right move here, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That didn't take long. How about that? BMC fly jig. Went in and got that. Let's get down and get it. Look at those marks on there. Little teeth marks, maybe. All right, let's get you back. Get down and maybe uh, get another one fired up like that. Oh boy. Down we go. You always hear about those perch schools. Oh, I caught 50 perch. You like that just falling down from the top? Wonder if I gotta just get up out of there and let him take a break here for a second and then get back down on him. Give you a little sneak peek inside the old ice fly box here, the old jig box. This is um, kind of a compilation of things here. We got some tungsten. Uh, three millimeter jigs, some fours, um, <clears throat> and then these are the fly jigs that I was talking about. So here's uh, another one of those rainbows, and then one sides up in the pink. Um, crappies tend to like those. Uh, if you can find a school and confirm that's what they are, that's uh, that's a fun little bait for them. As you can tell, I do really well on this Wonder Bread. Um, that color is awesome. Uh, especially for bluegills. And they just tend to eat that up. Um, I'll rotate between the Wonder Bread and then some sort of fire tiger color or parrot, sometimes it's called. So you get this kind of chartreuse, orange, and dark green. And then 
throw in metallic gold and black and those are that's a pretty good little you don't you don't have to break the bank buying 70 colors in three boxes like you can just start pretty small i'd get like probably um three of one color to start in one size just because you're going to break using two pound fluorocarbon or three pound fluorocarbon you're going to break off and it's going to be a bummer if that's what they're eating just like that purchase smash that fly jig and if i break it off well i guess the trip might be shorter than i would like it to be if they're not going to eat other stuff so occasionally you'll have those days but um you know there's no reason to go break the bank and, and fill this thing up unless you want to uh then go ahead but um that's could get expensive so <clears throat> set that down and get back to catch a couple fish here now we switched the flies so we got to start all over again with figuring out well we don't have to but I'm I'm going to start all over again figuring out what kind of movement they want side to side up and down aggressive slight and how much movement in the column you know are they hit do they want it falling slightly do they want it rising slightly it, it, sometimes it doesn't make a difference when you switch the bait. They may still want the same pre presentation. They may not. So I'm going to err on the side of figuring out it again automatically so I don't sit there and waste 30 minutes like, oh, I haven't gotten a bite. And then you're like, oh, crap, I didn't, I didn't restart figuring out what they want to eat. I switched the pattern. So it's just a good habit to get into, especially if you're switching and you're like, well, I didn't catch anything. Well, okay, did you... Did you try change something that you weren't meaning to, or did you not do anything different and you weren't catching them before either? When I get close like that. I'm just I'm just watching this tip, just watching it. I'm not even watching over there anymore. I'm only watching this. And now I'm glanced back over here because it didn't hit, so he's dropped off a little bit. So something I was doing he didn't like. Now he came up on it when I was just kind of barely moving it, almost holding it, like dead sticking it. That could be a couple things. Could be just that fish, not in the mood to eat. Could have been something I was doing. Those VMC fly jigs, um, they're oriented uh, a little differently than the tungstens. These, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example here on one of the bigger ones. They have the the eyelet opening, the circle is perpendicular to the body length of the jig. So if you can imagine the inner circle where you pass your line through of the eye of the eyelet or the, the on the jig, that is perpendicular to the eyeball of the jig. So you're passing the line right down the center of the body as you thread the eyelet of the jig. On these fly jigs, it's the opposite. The eyelet is parallel to the, to the imaginary eyeballs of this jig. So as you thread it to tie this on, you're going to pass the line across the body of this jig. Now what that does is when your knot sits on here, this, uh, this layout of this jig makes it easier for that knot to slide and for your jig to go vertical instead of horizontal. I'll show you what I mean by that. So we bring this thing up here. And if you look, look on the head of this jig, it's really easy for my knot to slide like this. And now, my jig is going straight up and down in the water column, which is what you do not want. That will generally turn off the bite. Not always, but generally that's not a good thing. So you really have to pay attention and make sure that thing is hovering like that, horizontal in the water column. And with these fly jigs, just the way the orientation of the eyelet is, it's uh, something you really got to pay attention to, especially if you just, you know, you catch a couple fish and you're like, oh, what's going on? Keep that in the back of your mind. You know, bring up, bring it up and look at it just for a second and 
confirm that it's still in the right spot. I'm also gonna put that little live bait back on there and see if that was why dude smashed it because that was there was no bait on that one anymore. All right, here we go. Let's try it again. Round three, bite. Also in my mind, I'm thinking there's fish here, but it's not a ton. I know the bite's been slow other places, just talking to people. So it is in the back of my mind, like maybe I should punch a few more holes and just see if I can get on a little bit bigger school. Um, but I've got fish below me, they're just not biting well. So I'm kind of, in my mind, I'm toying with the idea of moving, but as long as there's fish down there, I'm trying to figure out if I can get them to eat. <clears throat> and I'm having fun doing it. So if you're not having fun trying to figure out if a couple fish will eat, I'd go drill a few more holes and just see if you can get on a bigger pile. We're gonna get the old uh, jigging rat back out and just make some noise. Let's see what happens here. So many fish. Just keep looking and looking. Need one to commit. Oh, come on. We got them all the way up here. Come party with us. Come on, come party. Come party with us. Man, these are tough, tough fish. We're gonna see if we can get one to go here though. I don't have too much time left on the trip. I'm gonna try and see if we can stick one more. All right guys, I gotta get out of here. So I'm gonna drill one more hole and just see if it makes a difference or just give them a break. Um, these fish just aren't eating. I've given a lot of time to this uh, school and they're just not doing it. If I had to, if I had to sit on the school, I'd probably try another color um, or a different type of bait. Just, they're just not playing ball. So uh, we're gonna change it up here just a second and then I gotta get going home. So we'll show you the good, the bad. Caught a couple fish so far. Let's see if we can get one more. All right guys, well that's a wrap for this video got out did some fishing had fun that's what it's about i hope you learned something another tough bite uh but at least this time you're seeing fish so i don't know what's worse not seeing fish not catching them or seeing them and not catching them but we got two up got to look at them made them late for something threw them back um just a tough bite you know i've heard it's been tough all over for the last couple weeks all right guys we'll see you on the next video don't forget like and subscribe we'll see you on the next one